Airtable is a hub for information. It has the power of a database, but it's pretty like Notion and easy to use like Excel. Add automation to that and you get a pretty cool package. If you are left wanting more at the end of the video, I left a list of video links in the description below that will go deeper into the, each of the features we cover here. An Airtable database is called a base for short. Bases are stored in workspaces like this one here. You can have as many workspaces as you want, although each workspace is tied to a separate billing plan. So if you're on a paid plan, then it may make sense to keep most of your bases in one workspace, but you can have as many free workspaces and free bases within those workspaces as you want. To create a new base, click this little plus icon here, and that brings us into our new base, and let's go ahead and give it a name. And then I'm actually going to back out again so that we can customize the icon. By clicking this drop down within the icon, we can customize the color of the icon as well as the text. If you'd rather have a symbol, you can choose from the options here. If we go back to the default, which is the first two characters of the name, and then use an emoji as the first character of the name, the emoji is the base icon. So going into the base, I am going to name this first table tasks because I'm going to make a to-do list. We can create another table by clicking this plus icon here. When you create a new table, you have the option to create one from scratch or to import from Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, or a few other options. For this second table, I'm going to call it categories because I want to categorize all my different to-dos and this is going to be the place where I keep the different categories. Back in my main table, I'm going to get rid of the default fields and create some new ones. To add a field, we click this plus and then we give it a name and choose the field type. In addition to the simple field types like text and numbers, we can also use more fun field types like checkboxes, dates, single select, and even attachments. So I'm gonna create some basic fields for my tasks. I'm going to put a due date, a category a checkbox for whether it's completed, and then also an attachment field so I can drop in a picture, just make it a little more fun. And now I will paste some data in here. In Airtable, a column is called a field and a row is called a record. Airtable is not trying to be cute by using different names here. These names actually tell you a lot about how Airtable works. We're in a grid view right now, which is like a standard spreadsheet view, but we can look at our data in many different ways in Airtable, and these names more accurately reflect the data as we can view it in different ways. For example, if I expand this record or this row, the whole window is now the record and the fields are listed below. We can also create a gallery view, which creates a card out of each record, and we can customize which fields are shown or hidden. Or we can create a calendar view, which generates a calendar based on a date field that we specify. So we would choose the due date here, and then it'll show all our tasks uh, on, the, on the due date. Another wildly popular view type is forms. We can actually, with one click, create a form that we can share the form with other users and when they submit the data, it goes right into our base. Other view types that are available are Kanban, Gantt, and Timeline. Back in our grid view or our spreadsheet view, we can filter, group, and sort data. So for example, I can filter to see only the not completed tasks, or I can group the tasks by category. Now let's sort them by the due date. And actually I'm gonna group them by category again too. So it's sorted and filtered. You can have as many grid views or any other view as you'd like. So if you want to have basically a pre-saved view that groups by category and say another view that's just sorted by due date, you can do that. We can share any view with outside users by creating a shareable view link. Once we've generated a link, we can share this with anybody. They don't need to be signed into Airtable to see this data. All right, back in our base, linked records allow you to establish relationships between tables within Airtable. For example, since I already created my categories table at the beginning, I'm going to link to it here. 
I'm going to go into the categories table now and get rid of some of these blank records at the top. And now I can see the task that's linked to each category. Let's say that in the future, I want to create an automation that's going to email a different person based on which category the task belongs to. I'm gonna create an email field and put in the email that's associated with each category. Back in my tasks table, I can now create a lookup field that looks up the email that's associated with each category. This is possible because of the relationship between the two tables. We can also write formulas. So for example, I'm going to create a formula field that shows a celebrating emoji if I complete a task and it shows a caterpillar emoji if I haven't done it yet. So I'll create a new field, give it a name, pick the formula field type, and then I'll write an if statement that says, if the checkbox is checked, use the celebrate emoji. Otherwise, use the caterpillar emoji. In Airtable, formulas are performed on the field or column level, not on individual cells. This might feel a little weird at first if you're coming from a traditional spreadsheet, but it actually makes a lot of sense. We're gonna look at extensions next. Extensions are add-ons that you can use to give your base new features like charts and maps. There are extensions that help you pull pictures and text from the web, ones that help you visualize your base structure, and many more. Just like apps on the Apple App Store, people can actually create their own custom extensions. Automations allow you to automate repetitive tasks. Every automation is made up of two parts, a trigger and an action. An automation can be triggered at a scheduled time, like 9 a.m. every day. It can be scheduled uh, when a record meets certain conditions, such as when a checkbox is checked, or when a record is created or a form is submitted. Actions include options like sending an email or a Slack message, creating or updating a record, creating or updating a Google Calendar event, or even posting to Twitter. So in my demo here, I'm sending out a scheduled email every day at 9 a.m. When you're done, don't forget to turn your automation on. All right, let's go back to our home base here, and we're going to now look at interfaces. Interfaces are like a supercharged version of extensions. They live in their own area here, and you can create a whole dashboard of widgets, including charts, lists, and even buttons. I hope that video was helpful to you in understanding how Airtable works. To go deeper into each of these features, check out the links in the video description and make sure to subscribe so that you can stay up to date on all of the new Airtable features coming out.